My name is Stanley Sword and it's a great pleasure to meet Aguska, two-time world champion in freestyle soccer or football and two-time European champion as well. Warm welcome you to a conversation about this beautiful, fantastic sport, freestyle. Hi Daniel, thank you so much for um, inviting me. So pleasure to be here. It's, it's, uh, I watched your videos online. It was absolutely, it's, it's a combination of acrobatics and uh, ballet and football and, and soccer. And, and how, do you, how do you explain freestyle? Um, so basically freestyle for me, it's freestyle, as you said, like you can use whatever you want, whatever you like. Uh, for me, it's an art and I would say it's it just breakdance moves, mixing with acrobatics and football. So is there everything, whatever you feel like, you just express yourself with. And do you feel flow when you when you perform? Yes, yes, this is the most important. You just need to feel it. You just go and you show yourself. And yeah, this is the most important. You just flow with the football. Yeah. If people think that you are dancing with it. Yeah. And it's an old sport. It's 2,000 years old from, from uh, Asia when they started to, to perform. And then it came to Europe with, with the, the circus. And, and uh, was it... Uh, uh, who do you think is the kind of founding fathers or founding mothers of, of uh, freestyle? Um, so we saw from the beginning that Maradona and Pala started in the field. Yeah. We, we have like huge respect for those guys. And then after it, the most freestylers started by advertising of uh, Ronaldinho. When he had like advert and like all people saw what he was, what he were doing and like, you know, everyone like, whoa, okay, I'm going to start. So like, I know a lot of people who started by uh, Ronaldinho advertising. Yeah. And, and uh, music plays a key part in freestyle as well. What, what, what is your relationship with music? What kind of music helps you? Uh, so music, yeah, it's the most important, like for example, we've got the competition one week ago and the first two stages, we didn't have music, it was like some problems on the, on the network and we were like, you know, you can't feel it because it's like playing, it's so difficult to play without music, you need to feel it, it's the same with dance, you need to move your body, here you need to move your body and as well control the football, which is helping you a lot. And I would say my music, which really helps me, is like breakdancing music, where it's like a lot of beat in it. Yeah. So you can fit, you know, the vibe and everything around. So, yeah. And, and uh, how many countries have you performed in? Have you, have you, uh, you traveled the world? You live in London usually, but now you're yes. in Poland. Yes. Um, so I never really counted how many countries I did. But I traveled quite a lot, but it's not still the amount I wanted to um, uh, I wanted to travel. I still wanted to travel much more and everywhere. So um, I can't tell you how many countries that was. And you started out when you were 17. You played Maybe volleyball 17, before. Yeah. Uh, how has you grow? What if we look at the 17 year old Aguska and, and you today? What, what difference is there? What have you learned along the way? Oh, yeah, the lesson was huge. For example, believe in yourself. Um, I understood that if I have something in my mind and I believe in it, I can definitely do it. Um, as well, uh, 2014, when I was going to the stage, I was like, oh, they are much stronger than me. I can't beat them. And right now it's different. Right now I feel like, okay, I am ready for the final. I want to beat, beat the, you know, the best ones. And this is like different. I started to believe in my in myself, in this what I am doing and how hard I was working to be in the top. So yeah, like believe in myself and uh, motivation and det determination. Yeah. And and uh, do you have your own style? How do we see it's you? If we blur out your face, how will we see it's your your unique freestyle? Oh, uh, in in freestyle. Everyone have different style. Freestyle is really unique because every single person need to find your own style. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to really say. It's like, I love to do a lot of handstands and I love to do a lot of hardcore moves with my legs. 
which there is not a lot of girls which are push, pushing that level. So I can't really say it. It's quite difficult to explain to someone who don't understand freestyle, mm. you know? Yeah. And the rules are you can't use your hands or your elbows. Uh, tell us about the rules. Yes. So the rules on the stage are you can't use really your hands. Um, and as you said, elbows, but some people trying to use the elbows, elbows part as a showcase or something, but that it's not much about freestyle. So uh, I would say I will explain you how the battle battles looks like. Mm -hmm. And then I will explain what is the key in the battles, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically the battles, you, you are battling one girl and you are going to the stage, you have 30 seconds each. So at first, let's say I am starting 30 seconds, you change 30 seconds, three times 30 seconds each. After it, um, the judges are choosing who are better. Um, they have like five, five criteria. One is like execution, which means how you perform in general. Performance, which how you present yourself. Uh, creativity, originality, which you create or, uh, you know, find out the tricks or combination. Um, and there are two more, <laughs> which I don't remember right now. It's, yeah, um, the hardest move, how you are, like, how hard you are playing or you are going with the easy tricks or you are, like, really pushing into, like, higher level. Yeah. And the last one, it's, oh, it's it's too much of them. Yeah, but basically you have this kind of things. And control, oh, yeah, control. When you are dropping the football, let's say, several times, this automatically put out your um, uh, points in the control part. And is it hard to be, you know, you're being judged if you play, if you play soccer or football, you score a goal and it's, you know, quite clear whether you win or not. But here you're depending on judges. Yes, yes. But like, um, I would say you can still see, well, like, for example, we had last time the competition it was really difficult for me to know if I won, if I lose, mm. because you, you had like, five seconds to go to the computer and watch what your opponent will play. 20 seconds, let's say, watch. Come back to the point of the stage when you need to be. Lose another five seconds. So, like, you are losing 10 seconds of the performance of your opponent, which was really difficult for me to judge if I won, if I lost. But, like, um, in general, in the stage, you see what your opponent playing and you can answer with more difficult things or more creative things, which are helping a lot. Yeah. And how do you train? How do you train? Um, freestyle is really a complex sport. You have like tricks on your legs, which are the most important for me. Um, the transitions, which you are uh, going from up to down, from down to up, from like, let's say, from up tricks on your head mm -hmm. to the seating positions, from the seating position to the standing position, they are like transitions. Uh, after you have like upper trick, so every every move with your head, with your shoulders, and then you have the sitting position, which are like you know everything on sitting laying position. So um, you just need to find out the best what is working for you. For me, I am try training like the tricks with the legs and uh, handstands, and then other day I can do like uppers, so all the tricks on my head to lowers, so all the tricks. To, to standing position and uh, it really like depends how you feel like what you want to train because no one will tell you never like go and train the tricks on the head if you don't like it you just don't play it you just play like handstand or sit downs you know so uh, you just need to find out what is making you happy and how you want to use the tricks and combine it and how do you train without the ball do you do you is it is it cardio or strength training or what's important to you know how to build your body uh so yeah of course we say it's not enough it's the same when you have like footballers like 50 percent of them skills they are like staying in the gym and they are improving their body and their strength so here it's the same for me i am doing like mobility three four times a day um before the training so this is like strength and mobility so I am opening all my body, you know, to feel it well and then just make it them stronger as well. And this is the key in it. So you need to do different things to work differently and to be stronger in it. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, how do you think it will develop and, and 
transform in the future freestyle? Is there any trends coming or, or new forms or new rules? Um, I would say a lot of change already now. I started 2013 and 2013 was really old school style. And then from 2015, like freestyle change, there was like a lot of different things that people never could imagine that this is possible with the football. So the freestyle is all the time developing. And I would like, for example, criteria in the uh, competition. Right now there is five criteria. Criteria. And in the past, uh, that was only, you know, you had five judges and they judge, okay, who was better? Mm. You was better for me, you did better, you did better, you know? In this case, everything changes. All the time, it's something changing. And, and uh, the size, is, is there different footballs or, or is it one and the same that you use? Uh, the football. So the beginning, I was I used the uh, match balls from Adidas, which I really love. The finals one with the stars, I really love them. But then uh, for freestyle, this is one brand of freestylers. They created exactly the same match balls, like they are exactly the same, looks different, and they are um, just produced by the freestyle company, which it's really amazing. And I started to use them from two, two years right now. Yes. So yeah, it's no really changement in the footballs, but it's still it's still mm. the same. And and the shoes you don't use soccer shoes. What what kind of shoes do you? Uh, you know, I would say 2013 when I started, that was like soccer shoes, like for the soccer soccer shoes. And then um, with the time, the Puma came, uh, which had like flat sole, which is easier to balance the football. And they were like much lighter, which your legs didn't get like um, super tired so quick. So right now uh, we are using Puma shoes. They are called like Puma Light. And then uh, for freestyles, which as well, it's from Freestyle Company and they are based the same. And they are like light and the solid flat, which is really helpful for us. And how much do you compete against yourself? And how much do you compete against your, you know, your opponents when you, when you... Yes, I think the worst is winning with your mind because uh, a lot of time before competition when my body says like, no, it's enough, like you can't do it, like you, I don't feel like even to go for the training, you just need to sit and say like, okay, you want to win, you need to work hard. Um, and for me, the best motivation is like, okay, they are training right now. They are going to be better because you are sitting in your couch and don't want to do nothing. So this is motivation. When someone is working, I need to work as well. So this is fight between you and your mind. And, and how is it to, you know, you turn your passion into your, your livelihood and, and you can live out of it full time. How, how will you be set for life or do you have a second career? you think about for the future or um you know like right now i am working from freestyle so it's like more performance shows like you know i'm um, teaching people but in the future i would love to uh have like maybe like my own academy when i can have the kids and teach them and give them clues because like Seeing me from 2013 until now, I learned it a lot of the way as I did mistake of training. So when I could improve much more and much better and much quicker and the way as I am training right now and, you know, even the mental as, as your health and body, I would like to give everything to the young community so they can, you know, improve quicker and they can be better, you know. Yeah. Mm, so I think this will be one of it. And the second, I could have like my own um gym like create my own gym where i could have like my own academies and people could come there and train and everything that will be awesome as well so it's still for the future right now i am more concentrated on the competition yeah. and improve myself and what would be your three best pieces of advice for the next generation yes so i would say do what you feel like you want to do because a lot of people they have like okay we need to train like that, you know, like these day tricks are the most important and this ones. like I was training like that right now. It's not the most important. If you see something and you like something, go for it. Just train, train, train. After you will have, you will manage it. You will combine with something what you still like it. In my case it was like pushing into one style for like, I think three years I was pushing only one style and I didn't have like sitting 
uppers, nothing else. I was really plain and basic. That's why I couldn't reach more and more far. But yeah, just have fun. This is the most important in Trisha. Just have fun because a lot of people just going, crying, giving up because it's so difficult. Yeah, just find something would make you happy and just play with it. And have you had any accidents or, or you know, parts of your body being injured? Um, yes, I've got it. A lot of injuries. So the first was 2015 before my final um, battle in Poland. That was like Polish championship. And then uh, exactly five minutes before the final battle, I twist my ankle, which was really bad. And that was like mental fight before the battle. Shall I do it or not? I couldn't stand. I couldn't do nothing. And because like this set in my mind, that wasn't that much pain. But because I knew it, that it's something wrong, I couldn't give my 100%. So I lost it, that battle at that moment. Mm, and the second one, that was 2016 until 2019, last year. Uh, where I was struggling with uh, pain in my calves. They like was really strange pain. I couldn't sometimes even stand five minutes because I was feeling like they are getting heavy and painful. And um, last year I went to physio and they told me that this is problem with the knees, that the muscle of the knees are not working. So uh, the calves taking like all the function of the knees. That's why everything is accumulated there. And when I started to work on my knees and my legs, everything started to change, so it's much better right now. Yeah, and, and uh, do you have any pieces of advice how to, you know, push yourself through these different pains? I'm a runner myself, and I got the knee problems. Just, uh, is, is it, uh, how should we survive and strive, and how should we become better after injuries? Oh, it's so crazy. Knee problem, I would say it's the worst of all. Um, I've got the problem two weeks ago, three weeks ago with my knee and that was so disturbing wherever you go, whatever you do. But um, the question is how we can survive. Um, you know, for example, freestyle uh, is that you mostly use your legs and hands, but you forgot about different parts of your body. If you want to be good, you need to improve and, and legs and upper body and as well your core. You need to work in everything so you can have balance in your body so everything can work properly. As you could see in my injury, I didn't work on my knees. Mm. So that was affecting another parts of my body. So yeah, I, I would say just go for it and just make like work on strength on every single part of your body. If yeah. you want to become world champion, how do you transform that into uh, reality? Uh, yeah, it's just working hard. You just need to be better in every single style from others. You need to all the time watch your opponents, see what they are playing, preparing yourself and um, all the time be conscious like if they show something in the battle you need to answer it. So the dreams to become world champion that was only work like I was working hard all the time uh, because my journey was like 2014 I took the fourth place, 2016 second place in the world and then 2018 I won it. So that was, you know, that was the journey you you needed to find yourself and just push and believe that you can do it. And how much is mind and how much is body to become a champion? I would say 50-50. Yeah. It's like 50-50 of your mind and 50-50 of, of your body because, okay, you can work here, but if you are not stable in your mind, mm. it's not going to work at all. And how do you train your mind? Do you do uh, meditation or yoga or... Something like that. Um, I am not really using this type of things like meditation, yoga and everything like that. I am more into like imagination. So I am like imagining what, how my performance should look like, how I am feeling while I am winning yeah. and everything. So it's more about like feels that this is already yours. And do you improvise or is it all planned in advance? Excuse me? Uh, do you improvise or, or is it all planned in advance, your performance? Yes, yeah, so um, I three years I tried it to find out what is the best for me and I, I was changing. Like once I was just coming and I wanted to freestyle, whatever comes. Um, the other day I had like everything prepared, so I was coming with uh, sets prepared. And I believe that if you really know like what you wanted to show and what you wanted to play, 
it's much easier because sometimes when you are like flowing, you can repeat the things which um, the judges can see, okay, she already shows that. So the point for others, you know, you all the time need to be fresh and new. So yeah, I, right now I believe that the preparation and the sets, if you have everything planned and everything ready, yeah, I, it's, it's much more helpful for me. And do you have any sources of inspiration, other, other freestylers or, or do you look at the you know, the, the hip hop scene or, or the circus or? Um, so right now I was going more into like gymnastic with the foot, uh, with the ball. I don't know if you saw it, not how you call it. Mm -hmm. When the lady is doing like acrobatics and catching the ball between it and doing like uh, splits and everything. I really like that. But mostly what I was looking for is a uh, break dancing stage when they are doing some similar tricks like moves to our freestyle where we could use it, this in our freestyle with the football as well. So I think, yeah, break dancing and some acrobatic moves. This is like something what is helping. And uh, do you think, uh, you know, for, for, for the next generation, there's a lot of, uh, you know, stressful, there's a lot of mass media now you have to be a champion both at, at youtube and, and facebook and instagram and all these things uh is it only positive or is it negative as well to kind of make your own mark there uh it's really important in my case instagram it's helping me a lot to get um works uh, to be seen by others so i believe like using the social media and promote yourself it's not bad but some people take it this too serious and they want to be like, you know, really famous in it and everything. So they are like um, losing their own time, spending the time in social media instant to learn something and to do different things. Like I would say that it's good, but you need to know the limit and you, not, you need to know the worth of it because one day you will die and there will be nothing about your, you know, social media and nothing like that. And uh, it's such a beautiful sport to watch. Do, do, is there any pieces of advice for, you know, for, for the people who watch? What should we look at? What are the key factors in freestyle? Oh, key to watch. Like, I would say just watch the people who are really original, creative, and who are having the fun with the football. That it's something unique there. You always will spot, um, once you will watch, let's say, competition, you always will see someone who it's unique and who you want to follow and see because you see something different than others are playing. So, for example, I would say when I went to judge the Spanish championship, there was like really, like all the people, there was like two people who were like really unique and all others, they were like really repeating things, copying others, which was really boring to watch, but you still could like spot two people who are like unique and different, who you wanted to see, and who like you are waiting still for them other performance to see and to be excited about something new. And if we put Aguska on the soccer field in a World Cup final, you know, how would you use your talents to, to make beautiful goals? Oh, you know, it's really tough because freestyle and football, it's two different things. We are not running with the football. We are just standing in one spot and using our whole body. Um, and like, for example, I didn't play football seven years right now, which is like, wow, you know, it's quite long. So the, the same touch, it's, uh, it's, it's really different thing. But I would say it will be really tough for me to have the touch, the football, and I will lose like so quick all the balls, you know. But if I will like train football, we have a lot of freestylers who are doing and football and freestyle, which they are super amazing in it. Mm -hmm. And you still can, you, you remember when you told me about um, rainbow, the trick when you are flipping over? Yeah, this is like one of the easiest one you can do on the field and like um, taking inspiration from Palo or Maradona. If you watch them, you can easily do the same what they have done. You know, pass through mm. all these opponents, and oh, that was so beautiful. So, I don't know. I didn't play football a really long time, but if I will try it, I will tell you. And when will you win the next world championship? Uh, so every Red Bull Street style are happening in November. Uh, so it's like last year was 15th of November, this year was 14th of November. So it's like 
second week of November every single year. Fantastic. Then we look forward to it and we wish you the best of luck and one thank you for a fantastic, beautiful game. Thank you so much. Thank you.